Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sam Parthak and in this video we'll be talking about Cloud Casa. So Cloud Casa is a Kubernetes backup and cloud migration with cyber resilience as a service solution. It provides you very easy solution for backing and restoring your Kubernetes clusters with persistent volume and persistent volume claims. And for this particular video, we'll be using Cloud Casa and Longhorn 1.3.0 and we'll be like uh, using these two to showcase the simplicity that Cloud Casa provides for Kubernetes backup and restore. Now let's take a step back and try to understand why Kubernetes backups are important. Now Kubernetes is the de facto standard, as you all know, for running the containers. And it's now not only for the stateless workloads, which earlier it used to be the case a few years back, uh, but over the, uh, over the time things have matured and people have experimented a lot with the databases, state full workloads, and they have successfully ran it uh, for, for in production. So when you are running stateful workloads, you need the backups and the backup solutions, easy backup solutions. And that's where these companies, like they are, they're coming in and they are providing the simplicity on top of um, the tooling, the kind of Kubernetes way of doing things. And uh, that's what Cloud Casa is all about. And that's what we'll be discussing today. Let's get started. So before starting, obviously you need an account on Cloud Casa. Uh, you can directly click on login and sign up. And uh, this is how the sign up screen would look like. Very simple sign up, no credit card required because you can see the transparent pricing. Um, so you get a generous fee plan with 100 gigs, no credit card required. And you can see the other transparent pricing plans as well, where you pay only for the Kubernetes persistent volume data that you are backing up and not the nodes or the clusters that you are running. So that's pretty cool uh, in my opinion. Now, first let's create the Kubernetes cluster. Create new cluster, Longhorn Live, and we'll select the cluster type and we'll just create the cluster. So this is a CVO Kubernetes cluster. Though it will be getting created in under two minutes, but uh, we'll fast forward the video until it's created. So our cluster is ready, and now we'll download the kubeconfig file and export it as a kubeconfig environment variable. kubectl get nodes, and it's ready. Uh, now we'll install Longhorn on this particular Kubernetes cluster, uh, though we can directly use the CVO marketplace to install, uh, but I'll show you the commands to run, which is the namespace creation and the Helm install version 1.3.0. And after some time, Longhorn will be installed on this particular cluster. So Longhorn is installed and all of the components must be coming up. We can check that kubectl get pods hyphen A, and some pods are running and some are container creating. So the next step is to enable the CSI snapshot support on the cluster. Now for this, we need to have the snapshot CRDs and the snapshot controller from the Kubernetes CSI external snapshotter class. And for this, they recommend, Longhorn recommends release 4.0. So make sure you have cloned this particular repository, which is the external snapshotter and you are on the release 4.0. So I am, I already have it cloned. If I do get branch, I can see that I am on the release 4.0 branch. And I need to apply a few YAML files. So I go to CRDs, client, config, CRD and kubectl apply and next uh, is the controller so kubectl apply So we got the snapshot CRDs and the controller in. 
So there are two more things to do. One is to install open uh, iSCSI, uh, which can be done using this command. Longhorn has provided an installer to make it easier. So we'll use this. And another one is the NFS uh, client. Again, they have provided the installer to make things easy. So it's a V1 set. So we are all set with the pre prerequisites. And now we can register the cluster to Cloud Casa. For that, we log into the Cloud Casa and we go to the dashboard and we go to the protection uh, clusters overview. So you can see the clusters and you can see an option of add cluster over here. So this is how actually the UI looks like of Cloud Casa. So you have uh, jobs, you have clusters registered, you have cloud providers, and uh, you can actually register a cloud provider, which is very efficient. Um, like if you go to cloud accounts, um, you can add actually a cloud account based on um, Amazon Web Services or Azure, and it will automatically pick up the clusters for you. So you can see there'll be a few clusters that can be discovered and you can actually add them. Um, or you can just add a cluster and you can give it a name like Longhorn Live and uh, you can give description if you want to, some advanced options that you can choose uh, and you can click save. So this will provide with a, a command to run on the Kubernetes cluster so that an agent can be installed onto the cluster and can connect with this Cloud Casa account. So let's do that. So you can see all of the stuff is created. Let's see what our stuff is created till now. Kubectl get pods. So we have agent, which is getting created. We got the uh, NFS and iSCSI. Uh, we got all the stuff in the uh, Longhorn namespace. And we also got the snapshot controller, um, which is there. So we have all the stuff which is required. Now let's wait for the agent or the cluster to be active. So you can see after some time, the Longhorn Live cluster becomes active. Uh, when we click on the Longhorn Live cluster, you can define a backup. Uh, so let's define the backup. Before defining the backup, let's install an application uh, from the marketplace. So let's install WordPress, which will have MariaDB, uh, which will create a couple of PV and PVCs. Let's go back and check. PVCDL get PV. So you can see uh, the MariaDB and the WordPress PV have been created and so should be the pods very soon. Yep. And QCTL get PVC. So those are ready and we are okay to start define our backup. So let's go to the Cloud Cluster account, define backup, give it a name, Longhorn, Live and click next. So you can take a full cluster backup or you can select a few namespaces. Uh, we can maybe just select the default one for now. And uh, you can do snapshot or snapshot and copy that will actually take a backup uh, to the destination, like a cloud cluster storage, your own storage. So I'll do a snapshot and copy. And the policies, you can add more policies which are there and, you know, repeating when to schedule and all that stuff. For now, let's keep it manual. And we can click run now. Just before that, let's see all the pods are running. Yep, we have everything running. Just before running this, we need to edit one more thing. Yeah, I promise it's just one more thing. So what we'll do is we'll edit the volume snapshot class, which is uh, created. So let's do that. kubectl edit volume snapshot class. And let's do this. And in the end, we just need to add parameters type snap and now we should be able to run this so let's create now when we go to the dashboard we can see in the activity area 
that Longhorn Live Kate's copy is actually running. And we can actually see the logs from here itself. So we can see the overview, the activity log, what is happening, and what all things it has already started. So it already done the MariaDB PV claim. And it's successful. Just to add on the step that we did over here, editing the volume snapshot class and uh, you know adding that particular field will be automatically added in future by Cloud Casa. So you won't need to do it. So we can see uh, our Longhorn Live backup is already completed. And now it's time to restore. So restore is pretty simple. Uh, you need to select a copy and you need to go next. So we already have taken the default backup. Uh, so we'll uh, obviously select that particular namespace to restore. Next, restore name uh, can be backup. We can actually rename the namespaces. Interesting, let's do that and rename the namespace to new. Maybe it adds, uh, like it does default to a new default. Let's see what happens. So let's restore. Let's go back. kubectl get ns watch. Yes, it did create a namespace called new default. And I think it will be restoring the copies of the persistent volumes in this particular namespace. So let's check kubectl get pv. Yes, it did. And it has created the, the persistent volumes in the new default namespace, kubectl get pvcs in the new default. Yes, and kubectl get pods in the new default. And yes, we have all the pods in the new default namespace that were there in uh, the default namespace. So that's pretty cool. It can restore to a new namespace as well. I think that's the power I was telling you about Cloudcasa that it's, it's pretty simple uh, with the pretty generous plan that is there for the backup and restore of your Kubernetes clusters. So that was it about the um, Kubernetes cluster backup and restore using Cloud Casa. The backups are very, very important and make sure you are taking care of your backups and restores from day one and you're doing it on a regular basis of the mission critical data that you are having for the stateful workloads that you're running. And yes, make sure to check Cloud Casa out. They are actually the org members of my YouTube channel means they are supporting my work as well. So they are, they are always helping out the community in different ways make sure to check them out and it's it's pretty neat solution which is out there um so check it out and there is also a blog at cube simplify with uh, backing up where i have explained everything uh, in detail about um, you know how to add a cloud account and create backups using those so you can check that also out and they have other fancy features uh, like you know uh, the security scanning uh, of your clusters as well so Check out Cloud Casa. Let me know what you think of the backup and restore. What all solutions you are using for backup and restore of your Kubernetes clusters. And would be happy to talk more on the backup restore front. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you like, please drop a like and a comment and share it with your friends. Uh, that's what keeps me going. Join Cube Simplify. And we are simplifying cloud native. It's, it's pretty unique. And uh, uh, we'll keep on doing new things and innovating new stuff over there. Uh, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.